All right, here we are in the car, and um, this is a productivity hack. Productivity hack number one, and that is don't just spend time in the car. Do a fragrance review. Do a fragrance review in the car. How about that? How about that? It's like uh, six o'clock on a Saturday morning. I'm usually up at like before five on a Saturday morning um, for for reasons for reasons because I have to take I have to take kids to places at that time. And so I sit in the car and wait until kids are finished doing their things, their sporting activities. And I'm usually productive at this point. I haven't started to be productive yet because I haven't had my Melbourne breakfast, which is going to be my coffee. And um, well, it's a really nice cafe nearby. And uh, every time I go, they have got a muffin. Fresh out of the oven, and so that's going to be my Melbourne breakfast, as it is on a Saturday morning at 6 o'clock. And why not do a fragrance review while I'm up and here, or a few of them, as a matter of fact, while I'm up and here. So, here we go. Um, okay, so the story goes, I met a friend um, who's also a frag head, and uh, we every time we meet, we bring some fragrances, we bring some samples, we... We, we have uh, some a bite to eat and something to drink. And we swap fragrances or samples. And that's what we did this time. And he gave me a couple. And then I bought some fragrances as gifts recently. So I've received some more samples as well. So I've got four samples today that I'm going to go through of fragrances that I have never smelled. And um, let's do that. Because I'm going to run out of skin, I've also brought my tester strips. Of course, there is a ridiculous person who's curious about what I'm doing in the car. Um, yeah, I'm being productive. This is a productivity hack. Okay, fragrance number one. I'm gonna I'm not gonna spray all of them because I think I, I did try a few of these, a couple of these already. Fragrance number one is this one right here. It's called uh, Frederick Miles Uncut Gem. Uncut Gem. I looked this one up, and it gets really a really bad rap. Uh, 3.35 is not a good score for for Frederick Mal. Maurice Roussel is the perfumer, and I thought I would like this because it's got ginger up top, and I'm a big fan of ginger, especially in the top notes. And it smells great from the cap, I have to say. Um, and it did smell really good on the skin. It just wasn't very, mm, how do you call it? It wasn't very thought-provoking. It wasn't anything like that. It's just a very simple sort of ginger and citrus fragrance. And yeah, that's all it is, basically. And there's really nothing holding it down because it did disappear quite quickly as well. And I thought that it would need to be better, given the price. And as I say this, um, there are comments about this is an absolute masterpiece and brush aside criticisms about the price. Such criticisms are baseless. No, my friend, you are baseless. <laughs> Everything has a price, and that's what we anchor towards. <laughs> Idiot. Even billionaires quibble about price. Morons. Anybody who says, don't worry about the price, is a moron. I've said it before as well, so I guess I'm a moron. But I know enough about myself to know that I am. That's a point of difference. In it. In it, son. I don't think that I would wear this in the summer heat, though. It's a weird one. I wouldn't wear this when it's too hot. I mean, I'm in I'm in Australia, and it gets bloody hot here sometimes. Uh, but I wouldn't wear this in the in the summer sun. Um, that's for sure. Frederick Mars Uncut Gem. Uh, maybe in a, on a colder or a crisper. Uh, maybe in the morning like this, when it's going to get warm later, and I'm up early in the morning. I'd do that. Frederick Mars. You can go away now. The next one that he gave me was uh, this one by Gucci. It's called a Fading Autumn. Now, this is scented water, as a matter of fact. I'm looking at the at the notes here, and yeah, it's 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 another one of those in those sort of weird floral sort of bottles that um, Gucci released. And there's a few that are just scented water, and yeah, I don't understand why people give it a a bad rating because it's technically just scented water <laughs> longevity is not good longevity is bad 
but it just smelled when I wore this it smelled like something that I had used to wear in like the 2000s yeah yeah just something about it um, and it is the, the the perfumer here is um, what's his name Alberto Morias right and he's been going for a fair few decades now and in the reminds me of section the thing that I am remembering is not actually there so it was something else something that I used to have that's similar to this that's from like the 2000s if you know what it is please uh, put it in the comments but yeah this is a, it's, a, it's actually a nice comforting kind of scent it's like an after shower in the evening kind of scent it's got like um, sandalwood is the main thing that I can smell it's supposed to have cypriol oil or nagarmota and every time I've smelled that in the fragrance it's been really upfront and really strong and pungent and I could clearly tell it was there I can't tell that it's in here I really can't. Yeah. Cedar and sandalwood. Sandalwood mainly is what I'm getting out of here. A uh, little bit of cedar, not a freshly cut cedar either. Yeah. Just the, just a chemical representation of it. Yeah. Very light. Very, very comforting. That is A Fading Autumn by Gucci. All right. And then I bought a couple of fragrances as gifts. I got some samples um, as part of that. And the first one that I, that I got was uh, this one right here. This is um, Black Aoud by Montal. I do not have any Montal fragrances. Uh, I have not smelled any of them that have been good enough for me to purchase a full bottle of. This is a typical Rose Oud. I sprayed it on a tester strip because I dare not wear Montal immediately on the skin. And it projected like crazy off a tester strip amazing i could smell it like from two meters away it it drowned out every fragrance that was around it but it was very rosy like it became really really rosy I, the the oud i don't like it was there kind of in the background at the beginning then it faded away even more and then i thought yeah this is too beastly in the opening and then the mids in the mids it became good in the mids it was okay because the rose kind of um, tamed itself a little bit right but in the base everything went away and only the rose was there this is chemical warfare uh, I do not have any and in the reminds me of section there's no surprise that it reminds people of a Mancera fragrance who knew um, yeah, I don't have any Mancera fragrances either. I have not smelled any that I actually like. I know, I know. People, people like to, you know, rag on. I mean, people, people like me, actually. As a matter of fact, I've, I've ratted on this uh, fragrance house quite a number of times. Um, but I won't because, you know, I haven't given them a full chance, I guess. How many chances do you get? I don't know. There's like a million of these fragrances. And I don't think they smell too dissimilar to each other. Anyway, enough about this because it's not that good. If you like that kind of scent, like a rose oud, there's like a billion better alternatives than that. That I can tell you for sure. And the last one has been a fragrance that's been on my wish list for a very long time. Um, and I did get a couple of chances to buy it at a really good price, but I declined. I declined because I did not want to go blind buying a Dolce Gabbana fragrance. As I've said in previous videos, I've not had the best relationship with Dolce Gabbana fragrances. I should caveat that because I've had great relationships with their clothing. Um, I like their stuff. Just their fragrances. Yeah. And the one I'm talking about is in their velvet line. Velvet line? Oh, yeah. Velvet. Oh, Incenso. Incenso. Velvet Incenso. There you go. Velvet Incenso. It's, it's in some lineup that's like, you know, uber pricey lineup with a nice box and everything like that. This, because the notes kind of sounded like they would smell like um, Gucci Poem 1, is why I was interested in this. And yes, I do get very, very, very similar vibes to Gucci Poem 1. Um, this does go in a, in a different direction. I think it goes more towards the the... the incense direction rather than like the the pencil shavings direction that gucci again the gucci's on another level in terms of um class and sophistication and just 
its nuances. Um, this is a very good fragrance, as a matter of fact, and and similar, but dissimilar at the same time. So it's so weird that in the reminds me of section on Fragrantica, there's like Gucci Poem One is not there. So there must be other fragrances that this smells uh, very similar to, or that the people who are listing that this reminds them of something have not smelled Gucci Pot on one. And that's a shame because this does smell very similar to Gucci Pot on one. What do you know? Uh, this will not be my scent of the day. So I'm not going to apply this right now to my skin. I did put this on my skin and it was nice, but it was very subtle. Yeah. Um, and I think that's fine for a scent like this. You don't want this kind of scent to be projecting everywhere because you don't want to smell like a, you know, you just walked out of church unless you want to smell like you walked out of church, which is odd, but um, yeah, whatever. There you go. There's four samples. Me being productive, productivity hack in the car with my coffee and my muffin. I'm going to go have, I'm going to go have breakfast now because uh, it's breakfast time. And um, yeah. As always, thanks for watching. Click.